Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be reading more Kindle Unlimited romances. I know we are shocked, we're surprised, but I'm so excited to be doing this. I'm going to be reading three new release KU romances that I have been looking forward to reading for a little while now. I don't want to lie and say that I've been looking forward to reading these books for months and months because some of them I like just found out we're getting sequels or we're going to be the starts of new series. That's just kind of how it goes with KU. I feel like we don't get a lot of advance notice with new releases, but oh my goodness, I'm so excited for these three romances that we're going to be reading by some of my favorite authors and like new to me favorite authors. So first up we're going to be reading Quarterback Sneak by Candy Snyder. This book obviously just came out. I feel like I could say that about all of these. It came out I want to say like October 18th and this one is a follow-up to Blindside. It's like the third book in a series about uh, football players and I love a good sports romance. So I'm very excited to give this one a try. I loved Blindside. I think it gave it like four stars. I wonder if this one will be a five star. Then I'm going to be reading King of Wrath by Anna Huang. This is her newest release and it's the first book in her Valhalla Club series. I think it has a different name, but uh, it, it surrounds the guys who are part of the Valhalla Club. And this one follows characters that we learned about in the last book in the Twisted series. So I'm very excited to get to this one. I actually have an arc of it, so I'll be like one of the first people to read it, which is really exciting. <laughs> and then lastly, we're going to be reading Heartless by Elsie Silver. I have really gotten into Elsie Silver over the past couple of weeks. I read Is It Flawless, the first book in the series, and really enjoyed that one. It wasn't perfect, but I really liked that one. And then I read A Photo Finish, which was like five star, probably one of my favorite romances of the year. So I'm hoping that this one feels more like A Photo Finish. Uh, but really excited to get into this one. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Casetify. I was super excited when Casetify reached out to me because they make super cute cases that actually protect your phone without being super bulky. Their latest technology, EcoShock, and their iPhone 14 Impact Series cases has increased drop height protection of up to 11 and a half feet and is five times the military standard. You might ask, like, what is the military standard? It just means that the iPhone 14 Series cases have been drop tested 130 times to make sure that the EcoShock technology doesn't wear off, which is absolutely amazing to me considering how sleek these phone cases are. It's just all of the little details that protect your phone, like the raised bezel around the camera that makes sure when you drop your phone on its back, the lenses don't shatter. And I absolutely love the designs. Casetify partners with a bunch of artists every year to create patterns for their cases. So there is so much to choose from from their site. These are the ones that I personally selected. We've got this really cute one with like a swirl design pattern so you can kind of see the color of your phone through the case. We also have another one that has a little bit of sheerness to it, but it has this uh, good things are coming design on it, which I feel like I need. I feel like that's the omen that I need for this year. I also got this one, which I really like this one. I think this is one of the ultra impact cases and it has these like little raised sides. Um, they're definitely not bulky and obtrusive and I like that on the side you can kind of see the recycled plastic, which is super cute. Um, this is kind of like a floral design and then I have my custom case on here as well. I absolutely love the pattern choices on the site, but it is really fun to go on the site and create your own phone case as well. Customize it with your name or your initials. It's super cute. This one's super simple, but very much my style. And they also have MagSafe compatible cases if you want to attach a wallet or your power bank to the back. And with the amount of plastic thrown away each year, it's really nice to know that the iPhone 14 cases are made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials, and they're partially made from upcycled phone cases as part of their Recasetify program. But even if you don't have the new iPhone 14 like me, Casetify's own cases for earlier iPhones still offer really great drop protection up to 9.8 feet, and they're three times the military standard. Let me show you. So whether you're upgrading your iPhone or not, head to casetify.com for their latest iPhone 14 Impact case series, as well as their cases for iPhone 13 and earlier devices. Go to casetify.com slash Chandler Ainsley to get 15% off your order. Thanks again to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and get into the vlog portion of the video and we can find out which of these KU new releases are the best. All right, so I decided to start with King of Wrath as my first selection. I think this one comes out first and if not, I have an arc of it and I'm already 20% in. So let's talk about it. This book is about Dante and Vivian. We kind of learn about their characters in in the last book. I want to say that Dante attends this like Valhalla club that the hero in the last book attended. Is his name Christian? I think his name is Christian. And we find out that Dante and Vivian are kind of like reluctantly engaged in that last book. And in this one, I think it follows like a kind of parallel timeline because we're actually getting to see this kind of like fake engagement, fake relationship take off between Vivian and Dante. So Dante is this sort of like old money Italian businessman. I don't think he's in the mafia because there is sort of a storyline or a conflict that comes in really early on where we find out 
that he kind of got mixed up in the mafia and he's not happy about this. It wasn't his fault, it was someone he's close to, he's having to protect now, and so I'm assuming he has like no ties to the mafia, though I'm assuming that will come into play later. And Vivian comes from this kind of like new money family, I believe her father is a jeweler, and he's really insistent that Vivian marry someone who will bring, I guess, prestige to the family and bring more validity to their new money situation. And since Dante comes from this like, I want to say global like luxury goods conglomerate, so, like that's what his family is in charge of, dating back, you know, hundreds of years, her father actually ends up blackmailing Dante, so Dante will propose to Vivian. Vivian, I don't think at this point knows about the blackmail, but she is not happy about this arrangement and neither is he. It's understood that like neither of them are very excited about this, though she doesn't know the reason why he is not excited. She has just freshly moved into his apartment with him. In some ways, I will say it's kind of reminding me of the last book in the Twisted series, and I think that makes sense since that one was written like probably at the same time or like very close to this one. But I will say the thing that I'm enjoying about this book is that it feels a little bit more sophisticated. And it's not that I didn't like Anna Huang's writing up until this point. This book, I think, just kind of stands apart in that the writing feels a little bit more polished. And also the page count of this book is similar to her first, which was her shortest book. So I really appreciate that. I like that this is not some 600 page tome. I think this one's like 450. So it's not a short romance by any means, but it's definitely more reasonable in length. And that's something that I can get through in a day, which is important to me because this week is super hectic. I have so many books to get done, not only for this video, but for other videos. And it's not that I want to like skim this. Uh, the opposite, in fact, I want to be able to like really take my time with it. And to do that, like I need it to be a reasonable length. And it is, which is good. So again, initial thoughts, like I'm appreciating the writing. I am actually enjoying the setup to the story as well. Interested to see kind of the transition this one takes from this sort of like reluctant marriage of convenience, enemies to lovers thing to something greater. I wouldn't call it true enemies to lovers or anything. And I don't think that the author is peddling this book as such, but there's definitely an animosity between the hero and the heroine. I think my issue with, I think it's Twisted Hate. That was like my least favorite in the Twisted series because I didn't feel like the progression from enemies to lovers was very good. I'm wondering how this will kind of play out, like how that relationship will progress as the story carries on. But so far, like I am kind of feeling the chemistry between the characters. I definitely know that he's like into her. He just doesn't want to say anything. And also it's more just like a physical attraction at this point. He doesn't like love her personality or anything. <laughs> but since they're living together, I'm sure forced proximity will also aid in them kind of getting closer. Do you need some forced proximity, buddy? <laughs> this boy is not my enemy, but he is my love. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with this book. It's only six right now, and I actually finished the other book that I needed to read today, so I'll easily be able to finish this one. So I'll update you at like the 50% mark in a couple of hours. And in the meantime, obviously I'll get reading. I am 50% into King of Wrath and I am still enjoying it. I am reminded as I read this book of the last book in the Twisted series because it feels so similar and I don't really fault the author for that because if an author is going to write the same trope in two different stories it's probably going to feel similar. Like I don't think it's her fault for having two similar books come out back to back. There's enough differences I think to keep it interesting and to feel a little bit fresh. I think if you didn't like the setup of the last book in the Twisted series you're probably not going to like the setup in this book as well. While I'm not upset I guess that there is similarity between the two books, the thing that is kind of making this one less enjoyable in some ways to me is the fact that I don't feel like there are a lot of differentiating factors for our hero and heroine. I feel like in the last book Christian was definitely a very unique hero. I feel like I had never read anybody like him before and our heroine, well she wasn't maybe the most unique character ever, a passion in life. Like she definitely was trying to get her career off the ground and I think a lot of the things that she said about like being an influencer or whatever were pretty relatable as someone who like makes content online. So I feel like I fell into that book a little bit more quickly than I'm falling into this one. I don't feel like I know that much about Dante or his desires. I know obviously he's rich and powerful like many of the men in books like this, but I'm not really feeling his motivation or feeling what is driving him and I'm certainly not feeling that with Vivian either. She has her own event planning company. I guess at this point she has decided that she's going to event plan for or this like high society function kind of thing that's typically only available to women who are kind of old money versus new money and she is obviously in the new money category so she's jumped on this opportunity that she's been offered and I'm assuming that's going to come into play in the story but I would have liked up until this point for there to have been more about Vivian's passions and like what she is particularly into. I just think that makes for a more well-rounded and rich story because while I am feeling the chemistry between Vivian and Dante um, it doesn't feel like a particularly unique story, a particularly new story. I could probably name like five books off the top of my head that kind of feel like this one. And sometimes that's fine. Like I'm not mad at that by any means, but I think 
if these characters had been maybe a little bit more unique, I guess, in their desires or had had been maybe just a little bit more fleshed out, I think the story would like skyrocket in my mind's eye. But I'm 50% in and things are definitely going to change. Like I said, uh, Vivian does have this event that she is going to help throw. Maybe that's going to come into play. We've also already had some interesting moments in terms of familial conflict. I don't want to like spoil anything, but there's some things that definitely have not happened in other books by this author. So it is, I guess, feeling slightly unique in that way. But I think um, this is kind of more of the same from her and not in a bad way. I think if you really like Anna Huang's writing, like you will definitely enjoy the story. I think for me, because the writing in this one feels a little more sophisticated, I just want the overall story to feel more elevated, I guess. Um, maybe that's hoping for too much. I'm making this sound bad. I'm, I'm enjoying this book. I think maybe I'm just in kind of a weird headspace. I know that I'm in a weird headspace, so I am going to finish this book and hopefully view it with fresh eyes tomorrow morning when I update you on my final thoughts. Another day, another gray sweatshirt. I just had dinner and I just updated a different vlog on how I'm feeling about the name of the wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I know. Shocking. I'm here to update you on my final thoughts on King of Wrath. I enjoyed this book. It was, it was, it was really good. It was fun. It was a fun time. It was what I needed. It actually felt a little bit more lighthearted in some ways than Anna Huang's other books. You know, there was a conflict. There was definitely some groveling involved, but there wasn't like a big sort of Wattpad fan fiction-y conflict to make things cheesy. And I think that was what I was trying to say in maybe some of my other clips here. I feel like this book was sophisticated. I feel like the writing was solid. I feel like the editing was really good. I feel like the length of the story was just perfect. I feel like both of the characters kind of grew as the story went on and I feel like if you are looking for a good contemporary romance this is going to scratch an itch. Now I will say something that I think will perhaps not work for everyone or not work for readers who really really love this author's work. If you are looking for these kind of like out of left field wild conflicts and you want something juicy and you want something with like kind of in my opinion over the top smut, I don't know that this book will be that for you. I think this book does deviate from some of her other stories in that I think it again it just feels more sophisticated. The scenes like they definitely went there you know she definitely caters to people who enjoy smut but I didn't feel like there was any cringe involved. I don't know. Okay, well, <laughs> there's one scene that didn't work for me personally, but I wouldn't say it was like cringe worthy per se. There are some scenes in her other books that I was kind of like not a super big fan of the first time I read them, um, but this one just didn't really have that same problem. I really enjoyed this book. My only critique really, and the reason I'm giving this book four stars instead of five, is that I personally don't like when lies are the central conflict in a romance. I understand that characters have to lie for certain reasons or withhold information for various reasons, but for me it's really challenging to get past that. To me it's kind of on the same level as cheating in some ways because you are being dishonest with your partner and I think it can be really hard to kind of come back from that sort of lost trust. Yes, there's groveling in this book to kind of make up for part of that, but I do think ultimately I would have appreciated uh, if that hadn't been the conflict. I think it could have been cooler. Our hero shared some of his truth with our heroine earlier on and then a different conflict had come in. I think that would have been unexpected and maybe a little bit more unique and I think I would have, I would have liked our hero and heroine, I guess, to, to present a united front against conflict because to me, that would show, oh, these two, like, they really work together in the face of adversity and like, they should be together forever. A lie at the central conflict makes it to where I'm like, can they really work if he's not being honest with her? You know what I mean? But I don't think that's something that's going to irritate everyone. I think if you really enjoyed Anna Huang's last book, you would likely enjoy this one as well. Like I said, the writing feels kind of different, but I think um, the stories are similar enough to where I think it's a good transition. And I also think it's kind of a good transition in the sense that if you read the other four books in the series and that's kind of your starting place and you're hesitant to get into another series, like, it'll feel familiar familiar enough. Even though the writing's a little different, it'll feel familiar enough because I, the plots are similar in some ways. So I had a good time. It was fun. Four stars, you know? Love a good four-star romance. I'm hoping to find some five stars as well. I'm kind of holding out hope that Heartless by Elsie Silver will be that book, but who knows? I am going to go home though and read some more of The Name of the Wind and I will be back tomorrow and we can chat about Heartless. I think that is the one I'm going to start next. You might be asking yourself, do you only wear gray sweatshirts? And the answer is pretty much yes. It is actually cold outside today though. Blessings are upon on me. Truly, I just finished an adult fantasy book and I'm 20% into Heartless by Elsie Silver, which is so damn good. I'm having such a good time with this book. So let's talk about it. This book is about Cade and Willa. At the beginning of the story, Cade is looking for a nanny for his, I believe, five-year-old son. Luke, I think is his name. Uh, the little boy 
is really, really sweet. Cade is kind of in a tough spot because all of the women that are applying to be the nanny for his son just kind of want to get to him. That's unappealing to him. He's like, I'm not trying to start a family. Like, I am my own family with my son. Like, I don't want some woman to, like, swoop in and, and only be interested in hanging out with my son so she can, like, you know, get with me ultimately. You know, which makes sense. I get it. His brother's new lady and or, you know, probable wife. Is, are they married at this point? I'm not really sure. Summer, his sister-in-law, is like, hey, my friend Willa is actually looking for a job this summer. How about she take care of your kid? And he's like, honestly, I guess, sure, fine. It's just a delight, truly. There are a lot of, like, fun little moments that I don't want to spoil between the things that I just told you. Like, there's sort of, like, a chance encounter before the two meet in sort of, like, a work context, which is super fun. And then the interactions upon Cade and Willa, like, starting to, I guess, technically work together. Just so good. I didn't love the first book in the series, I'll be honest, but I did recently read A Photo Finish by Elsie Silver, which I just fell hook, line, and sinker for. Total five-star book. And this one is really feeling very five-star, to me. In some ways, it's actually reminded me a little bit of, like, Elizabeth O'Rourke's writing, which I'm really loving. The banter is really what's doing it for me. So, I think my issue sometimes with stories like this is that when we have a woman who's, like, in a caretaking position, when she's, like, a nanny or a teacher or something like that, uh, she has to fit into, like, a certain role, like, a certain archetype of, like, what that kind of woman should be, like, nurturing and sweet and just, like, there for the guy always. I'm thinking definitely of, like, Irresistible, I think, is the first book in that Melanie Harlow series. Um, I'll insert a picture of it right here. I really enjoyed that book, but the heroine in there, like, while she wants to be taken seriously by her parents, she is a very calm, sweet, nurturing type. And Willa, I'm not saying that she is not a good caretaker for the little boy, but she definitely has an attitude, and I love that. At times, Cade tries to kind of give her a hard time, kind of be rude to her because of um, her past, I guess. I don't know, she was a bartender, and because of, like, the thing that happened when they, like, kind of first had their chance encounter before she started working for him, he kind of, like, has a weird feeling about her, not in a bad way necessarily, but he's just like, he doesn't view her as like a professional adult and she gives him a hard time for it and also says like straight up, if you're not going to respect me, I'm not working for you. But a lot like more badass because that's just who she is. So I'm just really liking their dynamic so far. It's not enemies to lovers or anything like that. It's the kind of banter that I enjoy and I feel like it leads to a romance that has just the right amount of tension. I wouldn't call this book like angsty or anything. But there's definitely tension between Kate and Willa. I know that he definitely has a thing for her, but also at the beginning of the story, we know that he is not really looking to hook up with his son's nanny. Like, that's just not really something that he is in the market for. And we also kind of understand that his son's mother is maybe not the best person or maybe cheated on him or something like that. So he definitely has, you know, kind of some, like a broken heart in his past. So I understand his hesitance to like enter into any sort of relationship. And I don't think Willa has really considered Kate at this point. Like she thinks he's hot, but that's about it. Um, so I just feel like the progression of the relationship in the story is really nice as well. Just ultimately, I'm really, really enjoying this book. Be surprised if it's not a five star at this point. But if it's a four star, I'll be happy, but I'm, I'm really feeling like five star material with this one. So I am overjoyed, truly. Like I'm having such a good time with this one and it is breaking up some of the adult fantasy that I have to read quite nicely. I'm actually about to start The Priory of the Orange Tree, and I'll be reading this kind of in between that audiobook, so that's going to be super fun. I'm going to go ahead and get farther into this book, though, so I can give you kind of my more juicy, in-depth thoughts. I'm 50% into Heartless, and it's just so good. It's such a fun time. I won't lie, I had to set this book down for a second, but I picked it up today to kind of, like, jog my memory as to where I was in the book and, like, what has happened. I think the biggest development is that there has been sexual contact made between hero and heroine and I am so here for it. I just feel like the sexual tension in this book has led to places that I am into and even though they've consummated their relationship, I'm still invested in what's going to happen and I think that's such a key. Yes, I want my characters to have sex obviously, usually <laughs> in books. That sounds weird. I'm invested in them getting together in a romance. Like that is exciting to me, but I'm not like a smut city girl. In an ideal world, in an ideal book, they'd have sex at like the 60% mark and then I would still be invested and care about what's going to happen in the third act conflict. Um, and I'm feeling that way about this book. I love Willa and I like Cade. I think their relationship's really cute. There was like kind of a sick caretaking moment as well when Willa contracts an illness from Luke and Cade takes such good care of her, which is super sweet. It's just a delight. I don't feel like this is a story that has a lot of twists and turns or a lot of things to like remark upon per se, but it's just one of the solidly written romances that I wouldn't hesitate to recommend to any of my friends. Unless the third act conflict makes this book horrible or something or like something totally changes, I really think this is going to be a five-star read, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and finish it off and then let you know my thoughts and feelings. I think I'm also going to try and start quarterback sneak tonight because I'm just I'm just in a romance reading mood, um, but I will be back tomorrow morning to let you know my thoughts and feelings on both these books. Hello from me and Pickles. I have a lot of updates on the books, right? On the books that we were reading. I finished Heartless last night and 
it was like a six star read for me i'm not gonna lie it was so so good it's hard because i don't want to spoil the thing that happens at the end of this book but it is a trope that i know a lot of people aren't going to enjoy so it's really tricky i would say go on goodreads and look up any spoilers for this book if you are someone who i don't know has very specific taste i guess in how you uh like or don't like books to end but i personally really enjoyed it it felt very fitting of the story in general just the kind of girl that i am and the things that i like <laughs> i want uh, a guy whose desire it is to take care of me. That's not to say that I need to be taken care of, right? Or that I don't want to provide at all financially for my family, but I desire like a protector, someone who is going to earn the big bucks and let me pursue my dreams. And that's really what I got here from Willa and Cade. Perfect, okay? I loved this romance so, so much. It's not gonna work for everyone. I definitely understand that. I think this, I think the ending of this book is going to upset some people, but I loved it. I ate it up and it was cute, okay? It was cute. <sighs> That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna go into details, um, but there's a lot of sex in this book that is very steamy and well-written. It didn't feel repetitive at all. The romance is so well-developed. I'm just honestly in awe of Elsie Silver's ability to write a good romance that is not overly long, that has really good pacing, that doesn't feel like insta-love or they're just hopping in bed together. Like, this was so fucking good. This is easily one of my favorite romances of the year. Really, you should pick it up. Again, maybe look up spoilers on Goodreads just, <laughs> just in case, but I also don't want you to look up spoilers because I don't want you to not read it because of that, because I feel like what happens is fitting. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. I love this book. <laughs> and I'm actually also really loving Quarterback Sneak by Candy Steiner. So overall, this vlog, like, are we gonna have two five stars and a four star? Are we gonna have two four stars and a five star? I don't know. Regardless of what happens, I'm hyped and this has been a good time. So 50% into Quarterback Sneak. This book is about our characters, Julep and Holden. Julep, at the start of the story, we find out that her sister recently passed away way and she feels partially responsible for it. This kind of resulted in her doing a lot of um, partying and engaging in activities she probably wouldn't have otherwise, which really scared her family. Her mom has pretty much given up on her. Her dad, the football coach, has not. And so her dad and her move to Boston for her dad to take a new coaching position and she is going to finish out, I believe, her like junior and senior year at this university. She's an athletic trainer for the football team and her dad has given strict instructions to the football team, like, don't mess with her, um, don't try to get in her pants, whatever. Um, you Usually that sort of <laughs> instruction by a father figure really irritates me and I don't really understand the purpose behind it. In this story it makes so much sense though. So so big props first of all, to Candy Steiner for her ability to come up with a plausible reason why a father maybe wouldn't want his daughter to enter into some sort of romantic relationship. Her dad really saw what she went through and the sort of like risk-taking behaviors that she had right after her sister passed away. So it would make sense that her dad would be like, yeah, I don't necessarily want her hooking up with football players who are, you know, kind of players, right? So um, that is like the really biggest point of tension in the story that she can't really fall for Holden because her dad wouldn't be happy about it. And she does feel remorse, I guess, about what she put her dad through. And so she's trying to like be a good girl and um, she's not sure that she really wants to be in a romantic relationship anyway. And Holden is also going through his own personal kind of battles. He has a rotator cuff injury that uh, happened, I guess, freshman year, and he has re-injured himself. So he's having to be rehabbed by Julep. She is in charge of his care, which is super cool. And they get kind of closer that way. He also has grief in his past. Um, some of his family members have passed away, and so he can relate to Julep in that way. This story is just so expertly crafted. I don't know that it is the most achingly romantic, like, swoony romance ever. I, I think especially in comparison to Heartless, like maybe not as much. But that being said, there's just something so well-crafted about this romance that I just can't help but love it. I'm so impressed by the storytelling. I think if you're someone who reads a lot of romance, it can be really easy to get disillusioned and wonder if like an author will ever write a good puzzle piece romance or write a romance that like makes sense. <laughs> I just feel like a lot of the times, again, like I was trying to say, you'll have, you know, oh, you can't date my daughter in a story, but there's no reason for it. And so it doesn't feel like high stakes at all. This story feels like it's got the perfect amount of angst and tension and it is just so written that I, I can't help but love it. It's it's really, really, really good. And I, the sexual tension is definitely there between Holden and Julep. They've had their first encounter, shall we say, and it was uh, good. It's pretty dang good if I do say so myself. So um, I'm just having such a good time with this. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off though and then let you know my final thoughts and feelings. I feel like this vlog is going by so quickly, but time flies when you were literally having so much fun. All right, well, that took almost absolutely no time to finish. I think this book is actually the shortest of the three of them at like 300-ish pages, but it's five star read. When do I ever have two five stars and a four star in these vlogs? I don't know. I mean, with KU vlogs, it's obviously more likely than other ones, but I'm shocked and happy. I am ready to continue on with my reading day because I have so many other books to complete, but it's okay because I had a five star and that's all that really matters. Let's talk a little bit more about quarterback sneak. Um, this one, it didn't turn into anything that was like super remarkable in terms of, um, you know, outlandish plot or something that came in that I was really shocked by. The main plot or main like conflict continues to be the fact that Julep's 
dad didn't want her to be with Holden. But there were also some like other smaller plot conflicts that I think kept the story interesting. Mainly the one with Julep kind of dealing with the death of her sister and also trying to like figure out what she can do going forward to kind of heal from that. And I feel like it was handled really well. There weren't any like, in my opinion, super corny moments or things that were like, okay, yeah, sure, made me roll my eyes. I love how grief was handled in this story. It's something that, you know, kind of hits close to home um, since I've had, you know, some loss recently in my life, but it was uplifting, I would say. There are definitely some darker moments. I would say maybe try check trigger warnings out for this one. Nothing like super major, but there is some drug use at parts of the book. So if that's something that like is not something you want to read, maybe steer clear of this book. But I just loved Holden's insistence upon being in a relationship with Julep. I love how passionate he was about her. I just like him as a character. He was complex. He was interesting. He was sweet. Exactly the kind of hero that I tend to root for. And I just love a good sports romance, y'all, especially college football. I eat it up, okay? I just do. I love this book. I'm not gonna rant or rave anymore about it because I want this video to be like short and sweet and, you know, give you something to take away from it, which is that any of these three romances I think would make any reader very happy. I think they're just fun. They're fun books. Good times to be had by all. I feel like the state of KU is moving in a direction that I'm liking, or maybe I'm just finding authors that I like. But regardless, I had such a fun time filming this video. So thanks so much for watching. I love you so much. And until next time.